I think my emotions and whatever else took over. Um, as I say, I end up back with the supporters. Um, Jacko, that night came in, I think about half 10 or 11, can't remember, and grabbed me by the throat. Tommy Cassie rung me to tell me that Glenavon were going to put a, a had bid 15,000, which then was accepted. But he was on holiday and he came back and said he wasn't accepting it. So I was sort of thinking, you know, why are you not accepting it when the club was ready agreed to it? They wanted 20,000. Um, them days you would have got to say non fee. So I was busting to go. Um, I relinquished my, my saying non fee so as the deal would go through. I went to Glenavon and at that time, to tell you the truth, was probably the best thing I'd ever done. I'd done enough for Glenavon. The Merrill and our contract, whether it's a, a cruciate ligament or not, and I disappeared on the trade to cancel the operation. My I says, well, I'm going to go, I think, because, you know, the time, what happened with the club, I had no respect. At this, this time, as I say, I've made up with Adrian and a lot done of them, but next thing I heard Coyler was interested, and he offered me a two-year deal, which I couldn't believe. And Finney Argus just stand on the post. I always put it in the same corner. Always, or always trade. I was just one, I'm going to put it there. And he jumped. I it just squeezed above his head in the, the top corner. It was massive crowd again, man. It was sunshine. Warrenview Park was bottom. And I remember it was one of the most enjoyable goals I ever scored. Nobody was really thinking about the match. And I think we were so overconfident to, to beat in Korea in that final was a problem. That's a big regret for me because if we had had the same attitude that we had before the Linfield game, we'd have done the clean sweep. I think Craig behind Big Ronnie's back, believe it or not. He was raging. Yeah, he didn't want him. He didn't want him. And I said, sign him. And he was getting buttons. And he was wanting to sign. And McFall, Big Ronnie, no, no, he's, they never do. And I went to Stephen Henderson and he said, sign him. Listen, it was a tough time. Um, we definitely um, massaged a couple of people's egos and probably saved their jobs, which is disappointing. Um, there's a lot of, let's say, lies. Probably weren't lies, just the, the fabricated truth, would you say? There's things we weren't, weren't told. If he had us sat us down and said in January, listen, this is the situation. Can you take over Ronnie's been? Ronnie's gone. Can you take over from now until they come in, you know, and you know, we'll look after you or we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that, whatever else, then there wouldn't have been a problem. What does Glenthorne mean to you? And what, how would you sum up your career there? Dream come true. I mean, 100% dream come true. You know, it was like <clears throat> probably a couple of times, like a messy divorce. You know, um, it was a love affair. You know, I love Glenthorne more and Glenthorne loved me, unfortunately, at times, you know, um, but as I say, that I put that down to different people rather than Glen Tor. You know, you're going to have people come, people go. You know, I've been second by people, I've been second by Glen Tor.